Hello friends. So today's video is going to be a play on the if you like this, try that style of video, where instead I'm going to be doing if you didn't like this, still try this. And the idea is a lot of authors have written so many books and from book to book, sometimes the writing style, the characters, the plot lines, various different elements of the books can be so drastically different from one work to the next that it doesn't end up giving you a full idea of what that author is capable of and whether that author really is or is not for you. Kicking off the list would be Naomi Novik and specifically Uprooted and Spinning Silver. Naomi Novik also has a new series, Deadly Education, and then the Temerer series. So these are all very different from one another. I'm specifically talking about Uprooted and Spinning Silver though because one, the presentation of the books looks so similar that you would think that if you didn't like one, you wouldn't like the other. You would think that they're somewhat alike. And also I just found that the marketing for them very much made them seem like a pair. They are their own individual standalones, but it just seemed like they went together. They're both in the lane of grim fairy tale retellings. They do have a somewhat similar atmosphere in both of them, however, the plot lines and the characters are so different from book to book. And I have all of you to think, I've said this a number of times, I did not care for Uprooted. And I know I'm not alone. <laughs> I know, thanks to all of you and some of my friends as well, a lot of us didn't really care for Uprooted and a lot of us ended up really liking Spinning Silver. For me, Spinning Silver is one of my favorite books of all time. It's one of my favorite standalones. Uprooted follows a young woman who is from this village that is really close to a very dangerous forest. And in order to be safe from this forest, the village will sacrifice, and I don't mean kill, but they will give a woman to this wizard who lives in a nearby tower. And that wizard in some sense is almost like a mentor figure to some degree to the women that come to this tower. And it is through doing this, it's through this act that the wizard then as a thank you, we'll say, keeps them safe through his magic from this dangerous forest. I did like the atmosphere. I thought that the horror elements that were tied into the forest itself were really well done. I just couldn't stand our main character. I didn't like the interactions between her and the wizard. I thought that their relationship was honestly somewhat uncomfortable. And then there is a, a court intrigue sort of plot line in the story. And I normally love that kind of stuff and I could not stand it. So Spinning Silver, I was very nervous about, but oh my gosh, is Spinning Silver so different from Uprooted? First off, our main character is very different. So her father is a money lender and he's not very good at his job because he's very bad at getting the money back that is owed to him. And on top of that, there is an additional layer of it's a fantasy and historical fiction hybrid and their family is Jewish. And so they know that it's very easy for people who don't want to pay them back, who don't want to pay them what they are owed, to fall back on stereotypes and start speaking negatively of her family. So Miriam at some point though, sees that they are becoming poor, they're in poverty, her mother is becoming sick, they don't have what they need to take care of her, they don't have a good amount of food, and she's like, I've had enough. And so she decides, I'm gonna get what's owed to us. She is a phenomenal main character. However, in doing what she does and gaining interest, she is spinning silver into gold. So it kind of comes across as magic to the Fae. It catches their attention and they then want to sort of have her go through some trials. And they're very strange. The Fae in the story definitely feel more folklore inspired. They're very much tied to the atmosphere of which Naomi Novik depicts the setting and the atmosphere so incredibly well. A great winter book for sure. Whereas Uprooted I think is definitely also though good for the fall, I just wanna say that. But man, the main character is so great. And then there's so much nuance to the ways in which the other side characters that you're introduced to, the way they're treated, the dynamics of family, the dynamics of being in poverty, the dynamics of being nobility. There's just so many different threads that are brought up that are handled so well and I loved it. So one, thank you to all of you for essentially doing this video idea to me because it's one of my favorite books and I have all of you to thank for encouraging me to pick it up. But also, if you pick up Uprooted and you don't like it, 
please still give Spinning Silver a try. Next up, we have the Farseer series as well as Ship of Magic. I do want to say at the time I'm filming this that I have not yet completed Ship of Magic, but I know I already love it so much and it is so different from Farseer. I've always thought that Robin Hobb was a phenomenal writer. I did start with Farseer as it is the first series in the Realm of the Elderlings, which is made up of different series within this world. And you don't have to read Farseer to read the Live Ship trilogy, but it is the first one that's written. It's where a lot of people start. And the main character, Fitz, is not my favorite. <laughs> if you saw, I did a vlog not too long ago, and I just find Fitz is not my guy, is how I'll put it. But I did really appreciate the writing. I do appreciate the writing. I really like the side characters. I think Robin Hobb has a way of writing what feels like very real characters who experience emotions very deeply. And I thought that her world building was interesting and it was really cool, but I almost felt like we were limited in Farseer because we only really follow Fitz and it's first person narration. And when you don't love a character being in their head all the time, it's just not my favorite. And I think that's true for a lot of people. Ship of Magic is third person point of view, a very large cast of characters and it doesn't really feel like there's a direct plot. That is something that's actually kind of similar between the two series. It doesn't feel like there's a direct plot, but it doesn't matter because the characters are so interesting to follow. If you like family drama in your story, give Ship of Magic a try. The world is fantastic. The setting is so interesting. Robin Hobb has a way of writing the economy and the culture of a world. It always feels like it's coming back to the characters. It's connected to the characters. It's connected to how they feel about things. It's connected to how they behave, how they live their lives. It's just so incredibly well done. And man, so many morally great characters that are all so fascinating. Though There's some that you're like, I hate this person, but even them, you kind of like reading about them, you know? So Ship of Magic and Farseer, very different from one another in the characters, literally the perspective, the amount of people that you follow. There's just so many differences. So if you don't love one, I still highly recommend checking out the other. After that, I don't have specific books for this author. Just thrown out there, if you try Brandon Sanderson and you don't like one of his books, try another one. <laughs> so he's written so many books, which is part of the reason why I'm not even really able to narrow it down. But for my own personal taste, what I will say is I ended up trying Steelheart. And if I had started with Steelheart, I don't know if I'd have even wanted to keep reading Sanderson because I really didn't care for that story. And I love the Mistborn trilogy. It's one of my favorite trilogies of all time. I love the Stormlight Archive. It's one of my favorite series of all time. It's not yet complete, but oh my gosh, do I love it so much. I love the depictions of our characters' emotions and their mental health that you see in Stormlight Archive. I love the arcs of the characters throughout Mistborn. I love the way everything ties together, the action, the magic. There's just so much about it to love. And then I couldn't stand Steelheart. And it's just amazing to me that you can take an author who is essentially a favorite that you're like, they're never gonna let me down. And then you can read something by them and be like, what, this is the same person? <laughs> Might take a couple of tries to find the one that you like purely just because there's so many. But with how much he has written, it is very likely that you're gonna find one that doesn't fit with what you typically enjoy. And it's very likely that you will find one that does. The next one would be Shadow and Bone and then Six of Crows. Similar to Farseer, the perspective is different. So in Shadow and Bone, the entire trilogy, you're following Alina's perspective in first person. In Six of Crows, it is third person and you're following a large cast of characters. So it is different in that way. Also, I think that Shadow and Bone leans a little bit on the younger side of young adult. I think it's a great series to read if you're transitioning from middle grade to young adult and you are a younger reader. And then Six of Crows is kind of the aged up version. You know, as you get older and you're changing and your tastes are changing, then you get Six of Crows a little bit darker and you go a little bit deeper into the characters and the trauma and everything that has made them behave the way that they do, made them think the way that they do. And then where Grisha definitely feels like a fate of the world sort of a story, Six of Crows feels like a 
crime boss style of story. So in that way, they're quite different as well. Last for today, we have V.E. Schwab. Like a lot of the other authors on this list, I could just say V.E. Schwab to V.E. Schwab. If you don't like one, try something else by her. But I am going to narrow it down and say if you didn't love A Dark Shade of Magic, I would still give Vicious a try. I think similar to Sanderson, there is a certain signature tone to V.E. Schwab's writing from series to series, even when the premise is drastically different, even when the genre almost, the subgenre almost feels different. There's something about her writing that has a wickedness and kind of an edginess to it that I think is prevalent no matter what the story is that she's writing. That said, I think Darker Shade of Magic and Vicious are very different from one another. So with Darker Shade of Magic, it is more fantastical. You're following a man who has the ability to travel between parallel Londons, but beyond London, the worlds change. So the city of London is where the parallels are, but then beyond London, it the setting changes, which I think that's a, a cool detail. And then there's so many other things as in literally the color of the world is different. And with Vicious, it's less fantastical. It almost feels like X-Men. It almost feels like a comic book. And not that comic books can't be fantasy as well, but it just is very different from Shades of Magic. You follow these two men who hate each other, but used to be best friends. And you don't really know what happened and you have this fractured timeline throughout the story. It's not just past present, it's also further than that. It's 10 minutes ago, 10 months ago, 10 years ago. You get so many different moments and they're all mixed together. And then how everything comes together at the end. I just think that that makes for a very interesting reading experience. So not only are the plots very different and the world itself with Vicious, you're in our world. So while that's very different from book to book, how the story is presented to you is very different as well. If you like this style of video, I would happily do it again. And I wouldn't necessarily just stick to the same author from book to book. I would also happily take books that have the same tropes that are really pushing the plot forward or they're books that often get compared to one another. I could do something like that too so that it makes it easier for you to decide whether or not you really do want to check out a book even though you didn't like another one. But let me know your thoughts if you'd like to see something like that. Thanks so much for watching though. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.